this video I'm going to be talking about because uh, Hi everyone, my name is Mercy. Welcome to my channel. I'm super excited for you to be here. I'm a third year medical student. I'm going to continue with the U-World series, specifically talking about cyclosporin. It's a super high yield drug that we need to know. It's an immunosuppressant and I'm going to talk about the mechanism of action, how to differentiate from others, and what's important to know about the uh, cyclosporin specifically. So let's get started. If you are interested, keep on watching and make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and do share this video as that will be really helpful go ahead and follow me on my instagram account mercy medical i do have snapchat also mercy medical and twitter the same title so let's get started <laughs> you need to know the mechanism of action for sure. So basically this drug is an immunosuppressant. So we use it in patients that are going through liver transplant, kidney transplant, or um, a heart transplant. Before they actually get the transplant, we provide it so that we suppress their T cells, uh, therefore it doesn't react against it and reject the organ. So we use it like several weeks before. Like all drugs, it has adverse effect. And as we know, adverse effects are super high yield on the exam. So it's important to know what the adverse effect for cyclosporin is. So let's first talk about the mechanism of action specifically. So how does it work? So cyclosporin is going to specifically bind to the cyclophilin in the cell. By binding with the cyclophilin, it is going to form a complex, which is going to inhibit calcineurin. Calcineurin is a phosphatase, it dephosphorylates, and specifically it's gonna dephosphorylate the N-fat. Um, N-fat is essentially phosphorylated, and it needs to be dephosphorylated for it to go into the nucleus, and within the nucleus, it's gonna bind uh, to the DNA and cause proliferation of interleukin-2. What's important about interleukin-2 is that it produces more T cells. So interleukin-2 is gonna form, and it's gonna come out of the cell, and then it's gonna auto-regulate, or it's gonna stimulate the cell to produce T cells. So you have T cell proliferation because of these interleukin-2. And the N-fat, because it is dephosphorylated by calciferin, it goes into the nucleus and stimulates the production of interleukin-2. I know I'm repeating myself, but the interleukin-2 then proliferates um, the production of T-cells. So that's super important. And remember, the T-cells are what we're trying to suppress with the immunosuppressants, with the cyclosporin, so that the T-cells don't react and reject the liver or the kidney transplant that we're trying to uh, achieve. So that's the mechanism of action. Remember that it binds to cyclophilin and remember that it decreases the interleukin-2 production and therefore decreasing the T-cell production. So now what's the adverse effect? For cyclosporin, there's a lot of adverse effects. The major one is nephrotoxicity. So it's nephrotoxic, it's also neurotoxic, so they are going to present with tremors. That's the common finding with the cyclosporin in terms of neurotoxicity. And they can also have hyperuricemia, uh, they can have hyperkalemia, they can also have um, glucose intolerance, there's various, but the ones that we really need to remember is that it's nephrotoxic and hertzism and hypertrophy of the gums. So gingival hypertrophy and hertzism is common adverse effect of cyclosporin. And this is really important. Why? Because there's another medication that has a very similar mechanism of action. However, it doesn't have these two adverse effects. So in the vignette, they're going to talk about how the patient's getting a liver transplant and they're on these immunosuppressants and they present with these findings, including hertzism, which is a facial hair, for example, and women, obviously they shouldn't have that. So now they have this excessive growth of hair um, and uh, the hypertrophy of the gums, so gingival hypertrophy. So if they present with uh, those findings, you're going to say, okay, they're on immunosuppressants with these adverse effects, cyclosporin. You're not going to pick tacrolimus because that's actually not seen and that's how you need to be able to differentiate the two by the adverse effects. Tacrolimus has a very similar mechanism of action, however it doesn't bind to cyclophilin. Instead it binds to FKBP or something like that. It binds to that and similarly it decreases the production of interleukin-2 which decreases the production of T lymphocytes. 
Again, an immunosuppressant. And then also in the answer choice, you have azathioprine. You need to know the adverse effect for that as well as the mechanism of action. Azathioprine is essentially going to inhibit uh, purine synthesis. So it's a purine analog inhibiting the purine synthesis. It's gonna um, produce into 6-MP, 6 6-mark 6 purine. That's an important metabolite that you need to know that it converts into. The toxicity of azathioprine can be exacerbated with the use of allopurinol. That's a very common question right there. So allopurinol is going to exacerbate the toxicity of uh, azathioprine so never use those two in combination so the adverse effect of azathioprine is going to be dose dependent uh, diarrhea leukopenia and hepatotoxicity so you won't see the gingival hypertrophy you won't see the hertzism with azathioprine so if that's listed and the patient has hertzism and and such you're going to cross out the azathioprine because it doesn't have it and then mycophenolate is going to have a adverse effect of bone marrow suppression it does not have the hertzism and the gingival hypertrophy so you're going to mark that out as well so that's how you're able to differentiate between the two if they give you her and gingival hypertrophy you know that it's going to be cyclosporin and you know that it's not going to be tacrolimus because tacrolimus does not have that so it's really important to know the adverse effects once again and i really hope that was helpful and um is there anything else i would like to add with that no, but you really need to know the uh, cyclosporin uh, mechanism of action and the adverse effect. And I hope that uh, picture from first aid helps. That's where I got it, first aid. So I really hope that was helpful. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe and hit the like button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.